Hey, what is up everybody? I thought I'd do a video more focused on the smart automation aspect of my grow because if I'm being totally honest with myself, that is uh, what is actually more fun and interesting to me in, in all of this. So I will be focusing on that as a big portion of the grow and uh, as my updates as I go along. Um, so yeah, it is all driven by this guy, which is a Raspberry Pi. That Raspberry Pi is running software called Home Assistant, which is a very popular open source um, smart home control software. Um, really easy to use and accepts and integrates with a humongous number of different uh, automation equipment. All right, so what we got here is um, the light is first and simply connected to uh, this is a TP Link uh, smart outlet. I believe the HS100, which is uh, not the energy monitoring type. I got that a few years ago before I think they offered the energy monitoring version of it, which I wish I had, and uh, maybe I will get one of those. Um, but for what it's worth, I did plug this whole thing into a kilowatt meter and it was drawing 125 watts, um, which is awesome. And these meanwhile drivers are excellent. Uh, it's only supposed to be uh, putting 120 watts and I, it is powering more than that. So meanwhile, awesome. Um, okay, so the, the lamp itself can be powered on and off uh, with this. Um, like I mentioned in my other video, I got this guy, which is a Node MCU, um, connected through this wire harness to uh, <laughs> my electrical taped transistor and um, resistor, which basically just PWM open and close these two pins rapidly. Um, and so when they're fully open, it's at full brightness. And when they are fully closed, it is at, I think, 10% brightness. So also here's a, another Node MCU. And uh, as a quick overview, if you're not familiar with these, Node MCUs, think of them like an Arduino, uh, but with a Wi-Fi chip. Uh, and they are incredibly cheap. The, I got a four pack on Amazon for $18. Um, so it's awesome. These are so crazy widely used. Um, you can find a ton of tutorials and example code out there, um, so highly recommend these. Um, I can share a link in the description if you guys are interested. Uh, that is connected uh, to this uh, DHT22 temperature and humidity sensor. Uh, it is digital, so uh, as you can probably see, there's just three pins, power, ground, and signal. Um, so there's a communication protocol where it can communicate temperature and humidity over that one line. Um, and I can share a link to my code uh, there if you guys are interested. Also, this old iPhone is running um, a uh, virtual IP camera app that I downloaded for 99 cents. But basically, as long as I keep that app running, it's exposing itself as an IP camera on my network, which is my Home Assistant config is configured to uh, find that and store snapshots. Um, so that is all in terms of what I have now currently set up. I have ordered um, a float sensor that I'm going to keep in here to let me monitor um, if the levels get extremely low. Uh, I actually ordered like six float sensors that came in a pack so I might do like an array of them so I can monitor the levels uh, as it changes. I don't actually know how those work. Uh, we'll figure it out together. I also got a uh, waterproof temperature probe that I'm going to keep in there as well. I have not yet, but I would love to get a total dissolved solids meter and a pH meter. Um, but my, in my cursory explorations, those at least the pH meter to get a nice one seems very expensive. So if anyone has input or feedback on that, I would love to hear it. And as I mentioned in my other video, I'm doing the whole shiitake mushrooms outputting CO2 
idea. Um, we will see if that's useful. Uh, and also I would love to have a CO2 sensor in here as well. So I could kind of monitor that. Oh, one other thing I forgot to mention. I ordered a uh, humidifier, a small, I think 2.5, maybe 3.5 liter humidifier that I will connect to another smart plug that I have lying around somewhere. And I will turn that, uh, I will program that to come on and off depending upon the humidity that I read out of this DHT. So this is just a real basic interface. Um, when you uh, start it up, it like finds, it found my Apple TV and my Roku. So that's why those things are here. I don't really use them. Um, but what we got here is the grow light. Um, so I can set the brightness here and you can kind of see in the background the, the brightness changing. Um, the, the auto brightness calibration on the phone is making it not as bright as it appears to be. Uh, this right here is just on and off. Uh, you can see here the history of what it's been today. Um, you can also see here when I turn this off, this uh, doesn't always update unless you click on it. Um, but yes, yeah, so you can tell that's alive. Close the door. Let's see, it gets pretty dark in there. So that is the camera. Um, this is the temperature. Um, so this is temperature uh, since midnight, I think. Yeah, 11.59. Um, see, as soon as the light went off at midnight, it dropped down to about 77. And as soon as it came on, it rose quickly to a peak of about 88. Um, which, if I, what I think is too high. Um, so that is probably something we will have to deal with. Um, but luckily, it, with the door open just for a bit, it drops down to, let's see, about 82. So that means that uh, I will probably be able to vent this. Um, but it's a door in an apartment that I rent, uh, so it's going to be kind of hard to vent. I'd like to hear uh, some ideas from anybody if you have them. That is it for the uh, intro video to the automation portion. Um, thanks a lot guys and cheers.